This podcast is an invitation to feel and experience the souls of famous old Hollywood homes and to have an in-depth journey to the areas where they're located through interviews with longtime residents. Either you're a fan of old Hollywood in Los Angeles planning to have a vacation or an even bigger step, considering a certain area for your future home. This is your opportunity to receive valuable information and insightful advice you won't find anywhere else. Hello, hello, and welcome to my podcast. Are you in the mood for California? Today, we will explore and feel Marina Del Rey, followed by an interview with amazing Mark Feller, who will share with us what this area is all about. I lived all over LA, and I thought that, especially for my children as well, Marina Del Rey was a great option. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, and what does it actually feel for you to live in this area? Well, it's really, really huge sense of community here. Um, you're living in the middle of a mega city. However, you can walk to the beach in one minute, and you can look out into the ocean and be part of nature. Masha Korpacheva is a California-based realtor and a member of the National Association of Realtors in Los Angeles. She's an advocate for selling and buying homes with soul and practicing mindfulness in real estate. With master's degrees in spiritual psychology and linguistics, Masha brings all of her skills to work with her clients. An intuit and empath, she has touched many lives with her outstanding ability to see beyond the visible and helping to come to better understanding of issues and their resolutions. An adventurous world traveler, from climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania to exploring the Galapagos Islands, Masha has a particular passion for the City of Angels. Having landed in this paradise and adopted it as her home, she's been sharing old Hollywood stories since 2007. In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood. And now, are you ready to feel the soul of Marina Del Rey? The Harbor of the King, that first began as a dream, in 1965 became the world's largest man-made harbor, able to accommodate over 4,600 boats and held the record until 2003, when Dubai Marina surpassed it, but only as far as the size. Splendid views of the Pacific Ocean and temperate climate made this 800 acres, half of which is underwater, a very desirable destination filled with charm and adventure. This area used to be the mouth of the Los Angeles River, when the river shifted course south to Long Beach and Los Alamitos Bay, a two-mile-wide body of water was left and was called Del Rey Lagoon. Over the years, in late 1800s and early 1900s, there had been several attempts to tame the lagoon, but they all joined the polyphony, deeming the area impractical for a harbor. The luck turned around with a telegram dated January 25, 1962. Happy to advise Senate passed House of Representatives 157 today to change name to Marina Del Rey. Resident's signature expected in due course. James Roosevelt. Thus, James, the son of President Franklin Roosevelt, who was a Democratic California congressman after eight years of lobbying, became the father of Marina. Though officially Marina Del Rey was born when President John F. Kennedy signed H.R. 157 into law and on April 10, 1965, the community was dedicated and started being identified as Marina Del Rey. The total cost of the marina was $36.25 million for land, construction, and initial operation. Today, the harbor has 
4,600 boat slips and 23 marinas and anchorages. There is a boat launch ramp on the east side of the harbor, which provides access to approximately 100,000 boaters. It is also home to fishing tournaments, boating events, and regattas. Marina del Rey, which was originally recognized as a singles destination, has flourished into an excellent neighborly community. The Admiralty High Rise, or simply AHR, one of the highest and tallest buildings, is an 800 condominium complex, which can house up to 2,500 people, which is almost 30% of the population of Marina del Rey, located right across from Admiralty Way. AHR has a bright green aquamarine color and is 170 feet in height with 20 floors. Built in 2003, it was the main location in the 2010 movie Skyline. There is a great and sublime power in naming. Marina del Rey sounds exotically beautiful, and as you pronounce this name, you can almost smell the salty sea breeze and feel the fresh air playing joyfully with your hair. Sometimes your entire life can start shaping around certain names you give to events and circumstances you're going through. The name you give to your life will become the music you will hear all around you. Loving you is like a dance. You lift me up. And here we are. Welcome to Marina del Rey. I'm so happy to have Mark Veller here with me. Mark is a climate advocate and sustainable development advisor on environmentally driven projects. Mark will share with us what it feels like to live in Marina del Rey. Hello, Mark. Hello, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes, and I'm so glad that you were able to find the time in your busy schedule for our interview. Let's get it going. Yes. So Marina del Rey, it sounds just so romantic and it is such a charming coastal community with sailwalks, beaches and bike paths. So how would you describe Marina del Rey, someone who has never been there? Well, it's a little bubble. It's very close to the airport, it's close to Venice, and it's very close to the beach. Mm-hmm. Okay, so why did you choose to live in, in Marina del Rey? Well, it's I, I used to live in Venice, and Venice really got kind of hectic, and it's always been, you know, the quality of life was going down over there. So I just, um, I lived all over LA, and I thought that, especially for my children as well, Marina del Rey was a great option. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So, and what does it actually feel for you to live in? In this area? Well, it's really, really huge sense of community here. Um, you're living in the middle of a mega city. However, you can walk to the beach in one minute and you can look out into the ocean and be part of nature. And that's mm. really what attracted me. Oh, very cool. So would you say that uh, your um, lifestyle changed uh, since you moved? Yes, I definitely am. I'm embracing even more of an outdoor lifestyle. We live in California, yet a lot of people just aren't their house only, in their gym or indoors a lot. And I really take the opportunity to go outside. And especially where I live, there's a lot of outside areas where you have Wi-Fi so you can work outside, you can sit outside, you can eat outside. And I think this is huge. Yes, yes, for sure. And so what would you say your favorite activities are? And maybe there are some new ones that you put up since you moved to Marina del Rey. Well, definitely what I started doing in Marina del Rey during the pandemic, I started 
started fishing a lot. So I'm an expert fisherman at, uh, by now. And wow. I, yeah, that was good. And I really spend a lot of time in the ocean, around the ocean, doing a lot of physical activities outside. And I'm just um, watching sunsets. So that's really something that's that's really... Uh, and, I, and I've also really increased my fitness mm. because um, there's a lot of opportunities to do sports here, which I've uh, fully embraced. Wow, that's so cool. You know what? Tell me more about uh, fishing. So you're the first interviewee that I have who mentioned that. So what is this process like and how did you actually get into it? Okay, so during the pandemic, I was I was stuck here with my young child. She was uh, eight at the time and uh, Marina Channel is right in front of me. And I thought, what can you do with a kid just to make things exciting? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I started by remembering what I did as a child growing up, you know, I was looking for crabs, looking for shells. And then I um, I read up on it and said, you can fish from there. And especially kids under 12, maybe 12 or 16, even uh, I think it's, it's under 12, don't need a license. So I went and bought a cheap fishing pole and looked a little bit how fishermen, there's a lot of fishermen here, how they do it. And I started fishing and I only do catch and release. Mm -hmm. But we started, you know, to go there, climb around on the rocks a little bit, throw the fishing pole out. And we caught a lot of fish. And it was oh my God. Yeah. So we threw them back in. I did catch a halibut that I ate, but everything else goes back in because I'm. Um, <laughs> but the halibut it went straight into the pan. Yeah. And it was exciting for the kid. And you had to like climb on the rocks and find a spot. And so, you know, you really interacted with the ocean. We found like an octopus lair and we just talked to the community. There's a lot of guys that are fishing there, old timers as well. And, and it's it's really cool to, uh, it's, it's very much community based. Oh my God. So so you actually just got fishing rods and you went out uh, to the rocks and you didn't get on a ship or anything and you just fished right there from the rocks. Yes, that's all I did. So the point of that is like, do what you can do in the environment that you're in. You know, mm -hmm. if you're living in the mountains, go hike. If you, I had just had the ocean there, I took advantage of that. Amazing, amazing. Wow. And also did cold water swimming. So we swam throughout the whole year and got used to it. And that was fun too. Yes. And I can imagine that for a child, you know, being stuck at home during the pandemic and literally with nothing to do because everything is closed. And instead of, you know, watching TV or sitting on the computer, being out in the ocean and doing such a natural activity as fishing, that must have been so exciting. Yeah, fishing and, you know, fishing with the kids, you got to catch something. Other than that, they lose interest really fast. So you really got to get your, you, you know, your fishing skills up to a good level because if you don't catch anything, the kid's going to lose interest. But also climbing around on the rocks, seeing the sea life, um, getting in tune with the elements, um, watching sunsets, sunrises, you know, with the limited tools we had at that time, I just really tried to do the best. And it gave us all a sense of normalcy. Yes, I can totally see that. Absolutely. It's, it was an ingenious idea, Mark. I must tell you, this is brilliant. It was, I, I thought it was. And it's right there. Yet often people don't take advantage of it. So, you know, just open your eyes and don't look afar and just look what you got close, you know, community. Yes. Instead of looking to go, you know, far away. Just see what can I do here? And yes. that's what I embraced about Marina Del Rey. What can I do here now? I know, I know. And also, you probably met even some people while fishing, right? So you're not by yes, yourself. Not only, fishing, not only fishing, because this is what attracts me to Marina del Rey. I've realized having lived all over the city, we have lost the sense of community. If you lived in West Hollywood, in the Hollywood Hills, in Brentwood, in Venice, and wherever you want to say Culver City, you just don't have a real sense of community. And when I walk around here, I see people that I know. There's people that I work out with that are my neighbors. There's people that have children here where my kid can walk over and go to their parents. If I ever need a babysitter, I have places where my child can go. I take children in when they, parents need to do something. We do activities together. We have potlucks. And it's just, if I need to get a ride to the airport, I can call somebody. We trade food. This is really incredible in the heart of LA. It's 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 here. It's it's available. And people just don't have that. Yes, I, yes. Uh, very nice. I can see how, you know, maybe because it's so walkable that you have such a tighter knit sense of community. Would you say that affects it? Because like Hollywood Hills or West Hollywood, you know, you can't walk, but like not in Hollywood. 
foothills for sure. So would you say that because this place is so walkable, it makes it easier? To- yes, it's the communal areas. Uh, the beach is really not that many people come to that beach. So the same people that live here go to the same beach. You see the same kids on the beach. So that's one thing. There is a uh, um, the parks here. Kids take their uh, people take their kids to the park, and people just sit in the park. And there's a lot of activities. The water taxi that goes around here, and I think uh, you know there's some good gyms here. There's some little restaurants that are walkable. Yes, it's absolutely the walkability is key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. And so, what about the school system? Would you say that you were able to find some good schools there? Well, the school system here in Marina del Rey, I was very fortunate to be able to to um, get my kids in different schools uh, in different areas. So I'm, I, but I know parents that that their kids are they have the Goethe School, which is a German school, which is close by. There is some good schools, but schooling is challenging in LA. You really have mm-hmm. to look around. So I was fortunate because I had other options, but there's definitely some good schools here. Mm-hmm. Okay, but you have to look for them. Okay, okay, that's fair enough. And since you moved to Marina del Rey, you established your new home, you know, your new place. So I'm curious what your home actually means to you. What would you say is the heart of your home? I really have to tell you that I've really tried. I mean, my home is I feel comfortable and but I really You know, with all the time we spend alone, my, my home is there to entertain and to have people come over, to have my kids come over for me to chill. But I'm really much more into outreach. And, you know, after all this, this staying home and being on, on your own and working remotely and all this, I'm all about walking around, talking to people, engaging people. And um, I think that's really important. We, we've, you know, that that's social flexibility. Mm-hmm. And it's so easy. Easy. It's very difficult to go out. And as you well know, if you go anywhere, you don't talk to people. People don't talk. People don't engage. But here, I can engage with people. I can talk to people. I can just interact. And I think that that's the, the, the most important part of my home. Whereas before I was so centered on the inside of my home, now I'm much more focused on what is around my home. Mm-hmm. Okay paradigm shift yes it's huge yes oh my god uh, i never you know i i always thought you know you live in your uh, in your house and you you know you entertainment's the only no are you friendly with your neighbors can you go outside and are there some kids playing in the street is there some interesting people that 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 run hike bike go across the street and have a conversation with somebody do you have that at your fingertips i'm gonna go with mostly no i think that that's a min- minority here mm-hmm interesting yeah because i remember you were uh, and you i'm sure still are so much into like sustainability and efficiency and like one of your homes was like so magical in hollywood hills and the way you organized and arranged everything there no community no community yes i i was uh you know feuding with my neighbors for encroachments and you know noise and no community whatsoever there's always one cool neighbor but no community No, very little. I mean, if you have cool neighbors surrounding you, again, I think you're super lucky. Yes, yes, for sure. People have nobody to call on here. I can, if I'm sick at home, I can call a neighbor. They'll bring me some soup. Mm -hmm. Do do I need a ride to go pick up my car when it's at the shop? Yes. Or I picked up one of my neighbors the other day. He had a dental appointment and couldn't drive. Took me 20 minutes and then no that I can count on them as well, which I think is it's pretty interesting to be in such a network. Yes. But you got to work on it. It doesn't happen overnight. And I'm sure it gives you this feeling of togetherness and belonging, you know, uh, if, you know, you're at home just, you know, for practical reasons, because you need to home to live. But then, as you mentioned, it's a paradigm shift for you that you don't really have to spend that much time at home, that you're always out there meeting people, you know, building connections. I spend a lot of time at home, but I also have the option to go outside. Mm-hmm. And I realized that feeling when you go to the grocery store, when you go anywhere, he, nobody knows you. Nobody, you know, you go, I went to the Santa Monica stairs to work out. You know, you walk up and down those stairs and nine out of 10 people don't smile and don't engage you. And then you have that one person that says, well, I'm glad we're here and says something positive. This is, just, we, we really have I just think that especially in this city, you know, we people mind their own business and 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 are just not 
you really have to go to places over and over again. Like you said, you know, your favorite coffee shop or so that you can, you know, so you're just not one person that you have somebody. How rewarding is it when somebody recognizes you and says, hello, somebody. I know, I know. That is is not not very special, very special. I mean, that you just like get validated as being a a, a person. Hey, how are you doing? And not just, hey, how are you doing with no meaning to it, but actually somebody that possibly knows your name or knows something about you. I think that that's, that's really a huge quality of life. Well, I'm so happy for you that you found this community for yourself in Marina del Rey. And, you know, just to uh, bring some lightness to Santa Monica uh, stairs, maybe those stairs are just so difficult to climb up. So people have to be focused on that. That's why they don't notice anything. (laughs) And, uh, you know, you can always find the one. It it really helps if you engage a little bit. And like you said, some days you're just struggling and you just can't. And that's okay. Yes, very true. Well, let me ask you um, a few blitz questions about Marina del Rey, about your favorite places there. Okay, so I have a favorite place. Uh huh. Like, for, what's your favorite store? My favorite store, as far as uh, uh oh, my favorite store is gonna be Costco. Oh, okay. <laughs> because it's right down the street. As far as you know, stored Costco has great stuff. You need socks, you go to Costco. You need a uh, filet mignon, you go to Costco. Okay. You well, need a big screen TV, you go to Costco. I hear you. Yes, Costco really fulfill all of your needs just in one place and at good prices and good quality too. <laughs> I mean, it's really uh, well, it's. Awesome. Obviously, you know, but that's I, I thought about that because I read your questions and I thought, OK, little boutiques and all that. You know, I really, um, you know, Marina del Rey doesn't does not have that many stores. Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a little store that I also like that sells like uh, uh, like gifts and crafts. I, I kind of like that, too, if you need like a nice postcard or or like some little trinkets for somebody. Um, but I don't know the name. It's like paper or something like that. It's it's in a it, there's there's a lot of little stores there. But yeah. Mm-hmm. OK. Well, Costco it is. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> what about your favorite coffee place? I would say my favorite coffee place is the Cow's End mm-hmm. on Washington Boulevard, right by the beach. It's a, it's not corporate. It's just a coffee shop where a lot of people meet outside in the morning after coffee. You can see the the, the water from there and you can bike there. It's a, I think that's pretty cool. You know? mm-hmm. Very There's cool. another one that I like, which is called Groundworks on Road. Uh, Rose Avenue in Venice. Mm-hmm. And um, that one is nice too. But um, I, I would say my favorite coffee shop is going to be the Cow's End. Cow's sure. End. Okay, great. Uh, what about your favorite restaurant? My favorite restaurant here in there's, um, let me th- see which one I like. I You know what I like? I like Sakura House, mm. which is a Japanese uh, barbecue place that has been open for 25 years and um, that I kind of just like because I know the owner. And there's there's a lot of great restaurants here. Fantastic. There's, I mean, all over Venice. Um, I also thought they used to have, Zinc used to be on the corner of Abbott Kinney and Venice Boulevard. They, they moved to Lincoln. There's there's a lot of great bars and restaurants, but, and there's another great restaurant that I really like, which is called Custa, mm-hmm. which is a cheese and wine bar, which is fantastic. But all those are not exactly in Marina del Rey. They're adjacent. Very mm-hmm. good. Okay, but Sakura House is in Marina del Rey. I think Sakura House is going to be adjacent to it's right across from Costco. So I think that's Marina del Rey Culver City. But um you can consider that pretty much if you want a real Marina del Rey place, I'm gonna go with Brizos, which is um a, a restaurant and hotel bar, which is on um yeah, Marina. Mm-hmm. It's a New York hotel and has a really nice indoor and rooftop bar, which mm-hmm. is a walkable distance, which is great for meetings or just sitting by the harbor to see the boats. And um, that's really nice, too. Very nice. Rizos. Okay. So you mentioned that you love going for walks. And what would you say are your favorite streets? To walk, I, I'm going to say that my favorite walk is along the channel, past the canals, just to the down to, to the beach. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite walk. And you can also 
another really nice walk is from Via Marina. There's a little path going along the uh, Venice Canals. You mm-hmm. can walk all the way to um, Washington Boulevard. You can walk to the Cow's End. And another really cool walk is the loop that goes around the marina boat slips, which you can just, they redone the whole marina. It's really fancy now. And you can walk, watch the boats and just walk along there. You can walk really far. Yeah, that loop is very nice. I love it. You can bike it. You can walk it. There's a, there's like killer shrimp where you can go eat something. There's, you can, yeah, you can walk it all the way to Burton Chase Park. You can bicycle it. Um, Yeah, you can bicycle to the South Bay or you can bicycle the other way around to Topanga along the beach. Nice. Very I'm nice. Excited. Like uh, I, I would say till um, you can bicycle all the way to um, Chautauqua. That's a pretty long ride. So um, my last question to you. Do you have any secret spot where you can see the best sunset in Marina del Rey? I think on a jetty uh, is a really good spot. If you just walk along there, the jetty goes all the way into the ocean um, where the boats come out. I think that that's a really nice spot because you get the ocean wind and you can see pretty much 180 degrees all the way down to Malibu and all the way to Palos Verdes and the sun sets right there so it's really really good well that sounds just glorious to see the sunset on a jetty so you don't only get the sunset but you get the wind which is which is gives you that real and you hear the waves breaking against the rocks which I think it's a it's a really nice experience well Marina del Rey is definitely extremely romantic for sure it's uh you know so there's there's very little streets that go in and out of it so there's a bit of traffic but not Mm -hmm. crazy not crazy. Well, as long as it's not crazy and as long as you, Mark, feel happy living in Marina del Rey, it's all worth it. You made the right choice to move there. And I'm 15 minutes from the airport, which is... Yes. Great. Oh, that's important. Yeah. 15 minutes from the, airport, from the airport, especially if you travel a lot, that is gold to be so cool. Then you have good shopping uh, in Playa Vista, which is to have Whole Foods, movie theaters. There's, there's a lot of shopping opportunities around here, which is really close, which is like Trader Joe's, you really can drive them, um, you know, like five minutes, 10 minutes, and you're in, in brand new shopping centers, which is really helpful. Yes. Yes. Home Depot is around the corner, helpful as well. And that's it. That's my pitch. And I'm sticking to it. <laughs> that was a great pitch, Mark. And thank you so much for sharing your experience of living in Marina del Rey. And you gave such a you know beautiful description of the area. And I hope a lot of uh, listeners would like to come and visit and grab coffee at Cow's End and maybe um, get some really nice dinner at Sakura House and go see the sunset on the jetty with the wind right into their face i have one more thing for them yeah excellent fourth of july fireworks here oh yes fourth of july they launch them off of a barge so fourth of july new year if you don't know what to do this is always a great opportunity to be really close and see an incredible firework so that's my secret uh my my last little secret i'm divulging (laughs) thank you mark thank you for sharing and thank you once again and participating in my podcast i really appreciate it thank you thank you bye-bye Thank you very much for joining, and I hope you enjoyed experiencing Marina del Rey with my special guest, Mark Feller. Please press the like button, follow and share your feedback for the podcast. Your time and support are greatly appreciated. Next time, I will see you in Santa Monica. Until then... In the mood for California, feel the soul of old Hollywood.